What's up guys, it's the Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna do another first shots. Probably the most requested gun of the last six months or so, the Springfield Hellcat. This is a pretty unique gun, and it has a lot of features on it that I think are really interesting that uh, brings to the table, especially for concealed carry. Before we do the video though, I wanna mention my patient supporters. Thank you guys very much. There's a link in the description below. You wanna join the patron squad. We do patron only content, try to answer all your questions. Also in that link below is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa that I like to support. So go down there and click the link and donate to those kids. Now the Springfield Hellcat. Uh, there's actually, it's been out for quite a while and I'm probably the 1500th reviewer to review this gun. I definitely didn't jump on the bandwagon quickly. Uh, part of that is because I'm not the biggest fan of Springfield as a company. Uh, I actually live in Iowa, Springfield's in Illinois, and some of the things that they did, at least politically a few years ago, really, uh, really pushed me the wrong way. And I really didn't like the concept of kind of supporting and giving that company ad space, which is kind of what we do here. If I review a gun positively, people go out and buy it. So inadvertently, even though I have nothing to do with the company, I do generally help out their sales. And I was pretty upset by that particularly because it affected some of the people that I know in the gun industry. And whether I like it or not, I can be a little bit biased. And because that happened and because it affected people I know, I wanted to at least wait a little bit to give the uh, political climate a little time to settle down. They have rectified that situation, and on top of that, they have done several things, including donate to pro-gun uh, organizations, which has led me to decide to review this. On top of that, I sort of felt like I was going to get hung out in the county square by all you guys if I didn't review it eventually, because I have done lots of guns very similar to this, and it would be very cool to do a comparison video between this and the 365 and the Glock 43, and another number of other guns that are in a similar size uh, to weight ratio. So if you don't know, the Springfield Hellcat is a very similar gun to the SIG P365, a gun that I like quite a bit. They're the first company to really successfully copy that design. The 365 was first. They came out with a revolutionary magazine design that allows a single stack size pistol to take a sort of pseudo double stack magazine. The Hellcat's only 18 ounces. It is, has a three inch barrel and it's only one inch wide. So it's a very small gun, easy to pocket carry, easy to conceal uh, inside the waistband. However, it does accept either an 11 or 13 round magazine. It comes with both in the box. I believe there's other options as well, especially probably due to after market base plates. You could probably get this guy up to 15, I would be willing to bet, uh, at least from my experience with the SIG 365. On top of that comes in some pretty cool colors. It comes with uh, options for optic ready. However, this one is not. I got this out of my local shop for between five and six hundred dollars, and the only one that was available is the one without the optic. And I like to buy my firearms locally if possible to help support local businesses. So this is the one we went with. It comes with HD sights with a round uh, a U notch rear, which is very popular nowadays. Uh, it makes it easy to get a very quick combat uh, sight picture. It comes with pretty good texture and a flat face trigger that is very decent. One of the interesting things about the past few years, as far as striker fired pistols go especially, is that they seem to be coming out with better and better triggers, and this one's no exception. Especially for a small framed, uh, concealed carry oriented pistol, uh, the trigger's actually pretty good. Has a fairly wide and easy to hit magazine release. Uh, slide release is single sided, however, uh, I don't know, if, I, I don't think you can switch that over. It's got a little takedown release button here, and it's got front and rear serration front and rear serrations that seem to be very usable. And I do like the color as well. So overall, I think it's a pretty good buy for the money, uh, especially considering most places I go, this is coming in a little bit cheaper than the 365. Of course, that has to be if it is as reliable and accurate as the 365. So we're gonna find that out with a thousand round review. Uh, today we're going to shoot a couple hundred rounds through it and just see how I feel, give you my first impressions. A lot of you guys just like that and go off, that's cool. Uh, we're going to do a full review probably in a month or two months or so. It usually takes me a couple of months to get a full thousand rounds through. Part of the reason for that is because we have a lot of guns in the rotation on the channel, but most of that is actually because I actually uh, lengthen that on purpose. That way we can uh, find different weather conditions and stuff like that. Iowa, as beautiful as it is, is a, is a brutal beast sometimes. And it can be 100 plus degrees in the summer, and it can drop to literally zero in the fall, and 20 to 30 below zero in the winter, and it jumps all over the place, and we have rain, sleet, land hurricanes now apparently. Uh, that was a new one that happen this year. It's a really good way to test firearms in different conditions, so I like to do that. 
Overall though, we're gonna see how it runs. We're gonna go down to the range and we'll find out. So we're out here at about 80 yards or so and we're just gonna shoot at one of the IPSC targets there and just kind of see if we're on. And uh, if we don't hit right away, we'll go up close and just kind of judge where we're at and then we'll move back eventually when I get used to uh, whatever sight picture the gun gives us. That was way off to the left. Way off to the left. All right, it's pretty safe to say we're gonna have to shoot paper. Check that. All right, that was my first one. I pulled that one, that was my fault. These are the subsequent groups. There's actually uh, one, two, three shots right there. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously where the pistol's hitting. That was a 10 yards, so even though that's the left, that's a pretty good group, I would say, for 10 yards, minus this guy. Don't worry about that guy. Mm -hmm. So I can actually see on the pistol that the sights appear to be drifted a little bit. I can see the difference between, this obviously is a little bit more different than that one. So what we'll have to do, uh, but after we get done with the first shots it is, we'll just go downstairs, tap it with a mallet, and we'll be zeroed. Okay. So the other reason why it's taken me a while to review it is even though I like the idea behind it, I don't really like how it feels in my hand. And every time I picked it up at a gun store, it's just felt a little bit weird. And on top of that, my buddy has one of these and uh, the magazines are very difficult to load on his, and they're fairly difficult to load on mine as well. Shoots about the same as the 365. Got to get used to it a little bit. Throw the mag behind my back instead of putting it in my pocket, I guess. I like that uh, extended one much more, but that's because I'm a big old ogre. Let me know what you think. Okay. It's a little bit left, so you gotta aim right. There you go. Hmm, huh. I don't like it either. <laughs> it's it... incredibly snappy. Yeah, it is. But that's because it's a real small... I mean, it's only 18 ounces and it fires a 9mm. So, like... And I have small hands and it still feels really small. Sure, me. but... Like, I can't really get it. The so. argument for it, just like the 365, is it it's good for carry if it's real small. And I know that for sure because I often carry the 365, which is similar in size. So, I just had my wife shoot this, and we're going to shoot this at 50 yards here in a second. But I wanted to talk about how... A lot of times when people go out and buy their wife a gun, the, or they'll bring their wife to a gun shop and they'll pick a gun like this up, and it's so tiny and it's so easy to hold on to until you go out to the range. And then you realize that tiny little guns that fire a nine millimeter, especially 40 or 45, have a lot of recoil. And people don't wanna generally shoot them afterward because they're very snappy. On top of that, 
uh, guns like the SAR 2000, which my wife just shot previous to this. Uh, she shot that really well, even though that was even a little bit cheaper than this. But it's because it's a full-size 42-ounce gun, and in single action, it's got like a three-pound trigger. Whereas this is an 18-ounce gun, and it's got like a six six and a half seven pound trigger so a lot less weight to keep you on target a lot less surface area to hold the gun on target so your trigger control matters that much more so any little uh any little uh, deviation in your trigger pull is not going to be able to be overcome by your grip because it's such a small gun and it's so hard to hold on to not saying it's a bad gun every gun's designed for different things the sar may shoot better than this gun however if you were gonna carry that SAR all day, you were, you'd probably end the day wishing you were carrying this because this is so light and small. Oh wow. Am I hitting that? No. All right, I see where we are now. I'm literally aiming like three feet to the right, and we're at 50 yards. Should have changed the sights. Okay, so the barrel in itself is very accurate. Uh, we're just gonna have to drift the sights a little bit. I'll probably end up changing the sights all together. I generally like a U-notch. Um, however, I don't love the white outline with the green for whatever reason. So maybe what I'll do is just go in there and uh, black that out with some paint or something like that, and then just have to drift the sights. I'm actually really surprised it's off that far. Because uh, we were only a couple inches at like 10 yards, but at 50 yards, like I said, I was literally aiming at the space between that target and the other target. So we were way off the target. But like I said, the gun inherently is mechanically accurate because every time I point it into a space where it's supposed to be shooting, it actually goes there. So overall, interesting. All right, so overall, Springfield Hellcat. I'm a little lukewarm on it. I gotta say, I initially went on this review uh, hoping for the best. Like I said, I've had a, a previously bad experience with this. On top of that, I don't love the company that makes it, but I like the idea, I like the design. The gun looks cool, and I hear a lot of good things about it. The problem I have with it is it was off target pretty, pretty, uh, a pretty significant margin uh, right out of the box. And people will say, why didn't you just take it in and drift the sights after you shoot it? The whole point of a first shots video is to kind of simulate what's gonna happen to you after buying it from the gun store. So I understand that I can drift the sights and I will drift the sights for the thousand round review. However, a lot of people don't even know how to drift sights or even have the tools to do so. So if you were one of those people and you bought this gun, you would just have to deal with that being three feet off to the left, or off to the right, sorry. Or off to the left, yeah, my bad. But anyway, I was aiming off to the right, so it's a little confusing. But either way, other than that, the gun feels exactly as I kind of expected. Uh, it's a little bit snappy, it's a little bit hard to shoot up close, but so is every other small frame 9mm, like the uh, Walter series or the Glock 43. Not the Glock 43X, the Glock 43X shoots very quickly, and it definitely does shoot much faster than this. However, I would say this is a little bit more snappy than the 365, simply because I don't feel like the grip is as ergonomic, and I feel like it's a little bit more difficult for me to really wrench that pistol down. Uh, Felt recoil is one thing, being able to overcome that with technique is another, but if I don't have enough space to overcome it, it's kind of difficult. Uh, the gun itself though, if you like how this feels, it's obviously reliable. We've shot a couple hundred rounds through it today already, no malfunctions whatsoever. And uh, like I said, if the sights were drifted, the accuracy wouldn't be an issue. As you can see that where we were aiming wasn't where we were hitting, but where we were hitting was in a nice, solid, consistent group, and that's what you want. That means the gun's mechanically accurate. So if we had a red dot on here, for example, all we'd have to do is zero that in and we would have had zero issues. So I might suggest maybe buying the optics ready model and I kind of wish I did now because I probably wouldn't have even noticed that problem. 
Uh, the ergonomics of the gun feel really good. I definitely prefer the extended 13 round magazine, but again, that's because I got uh, ogre hands over here. If you are a smaller frame person like my wife, maybe you would feel differently. However, I mean, you said even that you felt it was very snappy, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one thing you're gonna have to overcome, you know, especially if you're buying this, like I said, if you're buying this for a concealed carry pistol and you shoot an XD, let's say, bang, I think you're gonna be pretty good to go there. However, it's gonna take some getting used to for a lot of other people, just like every other small framed nine millimeter pistol. You're gonna have to have good recoil control and especially gonna have to have good trigger control to get those shots on target. Uh, full thousand on reviews is gonna be coming up. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.